Okay, are we streaming? I can't check my like computer. Put the play button here. No. No, my like laptop can't play. Just... <laughs> <laughs> my friend apartment, but they work that. Check the YouTube stream. Jace, check the YouTube stream. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna like check on my phone real fast. Um, are we literally out of place? I think. Are we really out of place? No. Okay. Okay, we are live. Okay. Oh, sweet. We are live, so, so we're good. We're just taking the last like minute or so to make sure the stream is running and doing doing its thing. But like before that, before we actually jump into things, I, I'd want to mention uh, for one thing. Hi, my name is Jake, or, uh, one of the officers with CSG. That's Andrew. He's gonna teach you guys how to hack. Not really, but anyway. So um. Hi, we're CSG. One of the things that we like to do, uh, one of our goals as a, as a club is to try to sort of provide newcomers with sort of like a, uh, show them the path towards this is, this is the type of stuff you want to learn if you are interested in security because we know that in especially undergraduate level it is like not exactly taught very thoroughly in school so it's a lot of like when you're early in the field, it's easy to feel like, okay, I want to do this, but I just don't know where to start. And that's sort of what our purpose is to a, a large extent, is to help get people their sort of foothold in, into the field. So um, throughout the year, we try to do things like introducing some concepts and introducing some, some tools and, and stuff. And um, our goal is to like show you guys the way so that you can start learning uh, not only with us, but also go on and keep learning on your own if you're interested. Um, so we have previous user, years of uh, presentations and stuff on our website. Is that up? Right? Yeah. So yeah. so if you go to our website, there's like a ton of uh, like links to our previous posts and like slides that we made. And if you go to our YouTube channel, which is where we're streaming to now, which is why we took so long to set up, uh, you can like watch some of the videos we previously made. Uh, there, if you go to our Discord, uh, which is that link. Um, if you want to like type it, I'll leave it up for a while, uh, but it's also on our website. Uh, then you can join the Discord and our YouTube channel and the like website and everything are on there. Uh, if you Google UTD CSG, like we're the top link, so. Uh, yeah, okay, so I, and one thing that I, I just want to make sure is, I want to mention, make sure it's clear before we actually like get started is like that's our main goal, try to get like be welcoming to like the beginners. We've also gotten a lot of requests in the past, hey, we were like, okay, these concepts look really cool, but we're really interested in seeing what it actually looks like to do this stuff live, which is why we're, uh, which is what we're trying to do today, is give a, a, a view of that. So if you are sort of, if you consider your, like, I see some, some uh, familiar faces, welcome back. I see some, some new faces, and uh, if you feel like, oh, the, a beginner, and maybe like, this is sort of, a dive into the deep end. We're not trying to intimidate anyone away or anything like anything like that. We are trying to be as well, sorry, as welcoming as possible. So if you're not, even if you're not like 100% in step with us during this presentation, stick around. We are we are here to 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 try to help. But I'll let Andrew continue showing you guys how to hack. Have okay. Fun. So before I start the whole presentation on hacking, I also wanted to say that we're going to start doing fire talks. Uh, basically, we're going to want y'all, if you'll have like something you know or something you find interesting and you want to do a topic about it and you want to talk about it, uh, come like talk to me after this uh, or message me on Discord. My name is uh, Generic on Discord. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a very unique name. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so it, it, basically if you have a topic that you want to talk about or you have something that you know about and you want to share with us, even if you don't know about it and you want to learn about it, come talk to us and we'll help you like create a presentation, learn about it so you can give it's a really good experience. Yeah, so um, we don't mean like, like come for like half an hour or an hour presentation. We mean like 10 minutes. We're not like, asking like a, a huge amount from people who are interested in fire talks. It's really just to show up and talk about something cool that you guys have have found or, or learned about. Yeah. 
that's that's basically what that means. Um, another thing is is that before I start the presentation, I want to just say that like although I'm standing up here on a podium and stuff, if you have a question, like just ask it. If you don't feel comfortable asking it, join the Discord and ask it. I'm looking at the Discord right now. Google Questions isn't working for some reason, uh, but I will I will like look at the Discord to see if anyone has any questions about it. Uh, about what I'm doing. I'm also going to try to like get y'all to, you know, do this hacking session for me. I, I know the solution to this. I've done this. I've hacked into this machine before, but I want to see like y'all kind of work through it as well instead of just like listening uh, to me talk for however long. Uh, so really quickly, uh, this is a really beefy slide, I know, um, but I've made this so that when we post it online, uh, you guys can reference back to what I said uh, or watch the video and see it and read it in your own time if you want. But basically a quick overview of what I'm going to be doing and the steps that I, I kind of take for this entire process um, is recon. Uh, that's the first step. So recon is basically finding as much information about the target or the machine or the computer or the server or whatever you're trying to break into or pen test. Uh, it's finding any information that's publicly available that you don't have to interface with the machine itself. Uh, so using Google, um, using Facebook, using LinkedIn, using uh, Shodan.io, any kind of tool like that uh, would be, is basically what you want to try to do. Um, and uh, someone's saying that it's too, not, I'm not loud enough? Um, okay, I will try to be. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, basically, I think it's like my microphone is this, this mic, not this mic. Uh, anyways, but that's what, that's, what, um, that's what recon is. You just want to find as much information without actually interfacing with any type of machine. Because when you're, when you're doing recon, it's so that when you start to interface with machines and you start to scan them and you try to break them, you know information so you don't do things out of line and you're a little bit more efficient in your process. Because if you find something that you could have found in recon during enumeration, well that's like an extra hour, an extra day, an extra uh, process that you could have skipped by doing recon. Uh, it's just getting your ducks in a row before you start, you know, sending your ducks out. Uh, but uh, then the next step is enumeration. This is when you're going to start actually scanning the boxes uh, using scanners like Nmap, um, using things like uh, Nessus to find vulnerability. I'll go through that. Uh, I'll go through all of those tools right now. This talk isn't really about like here's some tools and let's use those tools. This is more like a the general idea of what you're supposed to do. Um, again, uh, by the way, for recon, since this is a hack the box machine, there's not going to really be any recon. It's they give you an IP address and you break into the IP address. Uh, so it's I'm kind of skipping that step, um, but. Enumeration, you're basically just scanning everything to know any information you can about services. Uh, you want to find out any kind of um, application that's running, what web apps they're using, what the operating system, any kind of information like that. Uh, another, uh, another step is exploitation. This is the fun part. Uh, that's the fun, most fun part for me anyway. Is you, you now you've enumerated and now you've scanned and you've like done all of this stuff. Well, great. Now you get to actually break into stuff and you get to craft an exploit, craft something so that you can you get access to something you weren't supposed to. Uh, let's say you're trying to break into a company and they want you to break into their user shares or they want you to get into their SQL database that has all of their users in it. Or you're going to a bank and they want you to be able to get into the vaults where like open the vault remotely. I don't know why they would have or vaults connected to the internet, but maybe they do. Uh, so, you know, that's just basically what an exploit is. Don't think that you're writing like zero days on the fly for the most part. For the most part, you're using other people's, yeah, for the most part, you're using other people's exploits and you're not writing your own zero days. Uh, <laughs> except for Jake over here, because, you know, he's the zero day master. Not really. Um, but, after you exploit and stuff, uh, then you then you do escalation, and so um, and so escalation is uh, basically once you get access to something that you weren't supposed to, can you go anywhere from there? Let's say you get user access on a machine. Well, in this case, we're going to be getting user access first. Well, we have user access, but we don't have control of that machine. All we have control over is whatever that user has access to. 
And for a lot of companies and a lot of websites, that user that you have access to is a, is a web user. It's not, you're not going to be able to do a lot of things with that. Uh, so uh, we're going to want to escalate to a root account or to something that's higher than what we are. Or even sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you, you don't increase or escalate at all. You just pivot to another point in the infrastructure so that maybe that will allow you to escalate further. Because you won't always be going in lateral movement. You'll sometimes be going you know, horizontal. Like you, you won't always be able to just get an easy root exploit. You'll have to move around the network in ways that uh, you won't that people necessarily wouldn't have th thought of because they they were not they didn't know that you could do that. Uh, that's that's the point of a pen test is to see things that the blue teamer or the security engineer didn't think of. Um, then persistence. If the way you got in got patched or the way that you got in uh, they kicked you out after a while, uh, you still have another way of getting in. You leave some kind of sys some kind of backdoor. And I mentioned here that you don't, I don't think I actually wrote this, but you, you don't want to put a back door necessarily because other people can get in back doors. You know, you want to have some kind of persistence that only you can get to and only you will be able to, and only calls back to you. The last but not least is cleanup. Making sure that no one knew you were there. If you're working for a company, a cleanup is more of a procedure of leaving the box how you found it rather than leaving no trace that you, you were there. If you're doing a covert or you're doing a black box testing, then that means that you, you're not supposed to be there at all and you, you are hired to make sure that they can't see you. So cleanup is essential because you want to start deleting log files or not deleting actually, but replacing log files with how they looked before you got in so that it looks like nothing ever happened. Um, there's a lot of talks about persistence and cleanup and exploitation and different techniques and stuff. And I highly recommend like looking at Black Hat talks and uh, and like going to Reddit slash our NetSec because they have a lot of great information on those websites for that. Uh, so we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be moving on to uh, what we're gonna be breaking into today. So we all we know is so the website that I'm gonna be going into is Hack the Box. And basically, Hack the Box is a website where you have to break into the website to in order to like get this. So you have they don't like let you just sign up. Uh, you have to break the invite code in order to like actually use the website. But it's just a war network with a list of machines and IP addresses, and they give you all they give you is the IP address, the difficulty rating, and the operating system. Uh, the difficulty rating I think was easy for this one, uh, maybe medium. Um, it's it's a user based like rating, so you know, 50 users rated it easy, 10 users rated it medium, and so on. But all we know is it's a Linux operating system, which is the best operating system. So yeah. Um, so that's our recon for now. Uh, so enumeration, we're gonna go on to enumeration because you know, I promise I'll get to like actually typing on the like terminal and look like Mr. Robot in a second. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, once we once we've done our recon, that was our recon for this time. Uh, we have a couple of different ways uh, of like things we need to do after that. So we have our IP address, and we can start scanning it with Nmap, Nessus, uh, web server. Uh, if it has a web server, we want to use GoBuster, Nikto, or WPScan. WPScan only works for WordPress. So for some reason, some people think that it's just a general tool to use for any website. It only works for WordPress. Nixdel works for every website. Uh, not very well, but you know. Yeah, not very well, and it doesn't give you that much information. But sometimes it gives you like like that golden cookie that you need or the golden ticket. Uh, and GoBuster is a is a directory busting. So let's say you have a website and you want to enumerate every single directory <laughs> and every single web page that you can go to on that website. GoBuster basically is a brute forcing tool that lets you run through a word list and hit every single one of these directories to see which one it comes back with a response. Um, not necessarily the response you want. Sometimes you have access denied, but you still know that that is a place that you can go to. So you'll get admin portals, you'll get information that you don't necessarily uh, see just by going to the initial web page because not every website was built for you to go to every single link. Um, so, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go to 
my Kali box. This is just a Kali 2018.2. I think that's like the latest one. Um, and I'm going to open up a terminal. People in the back, tell me when you can see this. Can you see it? Okay, cool. Do you want me to increase the size still? Okay. Is that good? <laughs> we're get, we're going to be typing small can, commands in this, this prompt, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So uh, with that being said, we have the IP address, which is uh, actually, let me quickly do something. Uh, let me open VPN. So in order to access um, this uh, war network, you have to... Um, you have to connect to a VPN. Uh, so ev when you create an account, you'll you'll get a VPN uh, file, and so that way you'll be able to um, connect to this network. So let me just make sure I'm on this network and not on the UTD network because I did that one time and they weren't happy. Um, <laughs> so I'm on the war network. I can ping the machine. Uh, does anyone want to tell me, because this is going to be an interactive hacking session, I'm not going to just sit here and do it all for y'all. Uh, so what should I do first? I have an IP address and I've done recon. You should end map. You, you want me to end map? I got you fam. So, uh, so I'm going to end map. Um, and so there's a lot of different things you can do with end map. You can even exploit with end map. What's what? end map? Oh yeah, yeah. I should I should say that Nmap it stands for network. By the way, if you don't know something, just yell it at me and I'll explain like that. I will, no one will judge you, and if someone does, they can take it out with me. Uh, so Nmap is a network mapping tool, and it basically allows you to scan a network for I a lit. A network with a range of IP addresses, you can give it a seeder, which a seeder is just a range of IP addresses in layman's terms. Um, but it, you can scan for services, you can scan for a ton of different things uh, that you would want to know on a machine. Like if it's running an HTTP server, if it's running um, a, if it's open SSH, Telenet, if it's running something that you necessarily wouldn't be able to just see from like browsing to the link. Um, so... The phrase is port scanning. What? Port scanning. That's yeah. what he's... Yeah. Trying to get across. yeah. So port scanning, uh, which a port people open ports to use services basically. So uh, Nmap, there's a ton of different options you can do for hack the box. I find that if I do s uh, lowercase, by the way, lowercase and uppercase is different in Nmap. Uh, you should read the wiki or the man page on it. It's like pages long, so highly useful. Um, but anyways, so sv tech sc tech. I'll explain what these do after I type them. Um, tech, P, tech, and then uh, what's another one? I, oh, yeah. Uh, tech, O, A, uh, celestial, and 10.10.10.85. .10 Did someone raise their hand? No? Okay. I just, I heard it. I saw a hand. Um, but so basically what this is doing is tech SV is service version. So it's service enumeration, seeing what kind of services are running. Um, then it's SC, I forget what that does. Same connect. Uh, connect scan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, if you, if that's a little bit more technical for me to get into right now, I don't know if I want to get into that. Don't worry about it. It's just very helpful in this situation. Um, Jake, you have something to say? I mean, if, if we, like, we're not trying to, like, teach anyone, like, the, how to use tools, though, if you have questions about the technical, like, very specifics about tools, about this presentation, I'm totally open to questions afterwards. We just don't want to like spend too much time on stuff that you can read from the man pages. Um, so, yeah, okay. I was just making. Oh, standard scripts. Nick saved me in Discord. Uh, SC stands for standard scripts, not scan connect. Gosh dang it, Jake. Trying to make me look bad. Um, I thought S S N is sin scan. Um. S okay, we're going to have this conversation later. Uh, so SC just stands for standard scripts, uh, checking with a standard list of scripts to enumerate through. Uh, TAC P TAC is scanning for all ports instead of the common 1000 ports. But um, the common 1000 ports are not, thanks Nick, that's Nick by the way. Uh, 
So uh, TAC P TAC is scanning for a list of the co most common 1,000 ports, which does not mean port 1 through 1,000. It means the, the most common 1,000 ports, which could go up to 3,000, as we will see. Um, TAC O and capital A stands for output all, which is every single different type of output. Um, and then I list the file that I want it to output to, because if you scan, you never want to have to scan again. There's no reason once you scan once to have to scan again unless you think that something new is going to pop up in your scans. And even then, you want to have your old scans to compare to. So that is why I, you always want to output your scans. Um, so I, I, this, is, this is scanning. Uh, I could pre press enter. Imagine I pressed enter. I didn't want to sit here and wait. So I have a directory, uh, celestial. And if I cat my celestial.nmap, this is the nmap output. Does anyone, can anyone read this to me? Like, does anyone know what this means? Yeah? Oh, 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 no, no, not you, Nick. Henry, do you want to say? <laughs> oh, okay. It says port 3000 is open. And it, there's a service called, H, there's an HTTP service. And we're using something called Node.js. Okay. So that is, he basically read everything I would have read off of this. It's, it's like very simple. It, it pulls up uh, you know, a pretty good, if you have more services, uh, it'll, it'll just put them all on the list. Um, and so this is, this is what you would see from an Nmap scan. I could run Nessus, but for this sake, Nessus is kind of a higher level, or not a higher level, but it's more of a uh, vulnerability scanning tool, not a network scanning tool, which means it'll show you things you can exploit uh, instead of just giving you ports that you can go to. Yeah? So I know for the sake of the exercise, like, port scanning is obviously going to work, right? Yeah. But in the event that we're doing something with a black box, right? Like yeah. Down the road, what if they have some IDS or something that's going to detect your port scan? Obviously, you can't ping all the ports, so what would you do? So that is a great question. And, you know, like, a lot of different people have different answers to this, and a lot of people will have different solutions to this. But, and Jake can, like, Jake seems like he has something to say, yeah, too, so... so. Uh, like you know, a couple different things. My first thought would be like, first I, I, I hope that from Recon I know exactly what type of ideas they have. If, if I have that knowledge, that's really useful. That way I can know how exactly it's filtering and what sort of rules it's following. Like, uh, like a lot of systems are gonna say, okay, am I getting a bunch of, of uh, uh, connection attempts from this one particular IP address over a short period of time? And so, a couple of different solutions might be a trying to use multiple different IP addresses, which admittedly is hard to do if you're not like part of a business. Um, it's not as hard as you. Th so there's a tool out. There's tools out there to do that. Uh, I'll like. I'm gonna like jump in there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can use that. There's also a built-in tool in Nmap called like it's a throttler. Um, which allows you to throttle the number of scans and space them out erratically between a certain time range. Uh, TAC T is the option, and then there are three different like layers to that. There's two, there's one, two, and five. I think five is the fastest. Uh, two is like what people normally use when there's some IDS, but not really that strict. And then one is like go and get a cup of coffee for the next three days because you're going to be waiting for a while. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's basically where I was going to go. Like, the other main thing would be uh, like changing the rate at which you, you scan these things to help you get around it. But even then, you know, sometimes like it's not about an IDS or how fast you're scanning. Sometimes it's just there's a firewall and you're just not, none of your packets are going to get through. And you just sort of like, all right, a, either A, try to compromise the firewall, or B, just look for a, like, a, just find whatever they have to, they, have, they most likely have to keep something open to the internet. Just see what, just enumerate as much attack surface as you can, and uh, and then go from there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a great question. If you have more questions, please ask. We are like not afraid to answer. Uh, so you've nmap now, and we see that there is a service, an HTTP service. So it's a web service running on port three thousand, and it is a Node.js uh, service. Does anyone know what Node.js is? Okay, not very many people, but people. Okay. Well, Node.js is just like a is is just a framework, as it says. It's a frame. It's a web framework for you to uh, program a web service. Uh, it's it's a service. It's a server application that you can 
make web applications with. Uh, I know that's a terrible description, but you'll see why I don't know very much about Node, yet I can still exploit it, because it still follows programming rules. Um, so now that we have this information, what do we want? We know it's a web application, so what do we want to do now? What, it, what else did I, what are some tools that I said we can use after uh, we end mapped it? Back from what I just said in the presentation. Anyone want to give me a hint? Not you, Nick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nikto? Nikto? Okay. Um, I can Nikto it for you. So, Nick, Nick, toe. Uh, and then I believe it's just the, I haven't used Nick toe in a while, but, and then you have to specify the port and I can press enter and this is not how it, I think you have to like, I think there's a host. See, I don't know every tool, but I know how to figure out how to use every tool. There's a difference. So, uh, attack host. Okay. So I can just do attack host equals there you go. So that's going to run. Um, and we get a spill of information that looks somewhat helpful, not really at all. Uh, as Jake said, Nikto can often not ever be useful. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes it can be. I have yet to have that occur. Have that occur. I have, I've had it helpful. Oh, you've had it helpful? Yeah. It, find, it finds default admin pages really well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So if you want to find default admin pages, but in this case, I'm going to stop this because I know the solution and I know this isn't going to help us. Uh, what is the thing that we should, we know it's a web service, right? Um, and, you know, like, we know it's a web service. What is something we want to do when it's a web service? We haven't done this yet. It's, it has an, we have an IP address, a port, and it's a web service. We want, we want to curl it? Are you sure we want to curl it? Henry, I know you said the right answer, but I want to see if anyone else says it. Just open it in the browser. There you go. So we want to just open it in the browser. Um, yeah, it's like it, it's very simple to forget. Uh, because I have the ca caching, it opened it up in a browser for me, and it says, "Hey, dummy, two plus two is twenty-two. That's a uh, that's not right, but is or is it? Think about it. Is two plus two twenty-two? Totally. Yeah. So we have this information, right? And we know it's a web application. Um, and I didn't mention this in the slide because this is more of a niche, uh, or not niche, but like a, this is more of a specific tool that you would use for web application testing. Um, what do we want to do now that we have this page? And if you were in the Discord, I kind of said this for the hack the box link. What do we want to view? What, what, what information do we want to look on this page that we can't see already? Inspect elements. That is a that is I believe that is a good idea. So we can inspect elements, and you know there's not much here. Um, there's not much in the HTML page. We can go to the console, but we're not going to see much there. But yeah, the network option. Who said that? Plus ten points for Henry. Um, so we we can we can. Oh, uh, I have I have. So we can see in here. Um, that, you know, we don't get as much information as we'd like. So what, do, what should we do now? We should open up, I didn't say this in the slide, so I'm not going to ask you all to know this, uh, but we should open up Burp Suite. Burp Suite is a tool that lets us manipulate web traffic so that we can send it information and see what information it sends us back in the ROST form, and we can kind of create a payload and an exploit based off of that. So um, if you have Kali, it works out of the box. If you don't have Kali, Good luck installing it. It works somewhat in Windows. It works somewhat in Windows. <laughs> I've had okay experience with it working in Windows. Um, it doesn't like to Windows doesn't like to give up its networking like features very easily. So if we go to the um, uh, I think if we go here and we reload the page, uh, we can see over here that we, we can forward traffic and we can see like the, the next request. So we forward the traffic um, and a 404, oh, that's wonderful. There we go. This is what it's supposed to say. Sometimes a 404 is because, you know, it's not happy with us. Uh, that's okay. Don't get deterred. Just keep going. Uh, by the famous words of Dory. Um, so 
we have this like long profile string, right? Does anyone know what that looks like? If you know, in, like, it's, uh, JSON. it's JSON. JSON string. In what format? In though? Base 64. There you go, Henry. Um, so, what's it called? So, by the way, he's he's the president of the assembly club or the assembly group. Um, so, but uh, we're, we'll we'll do a shout out at the end. Um, so. If we copy this in, like first of all, we want to constantly replay this attack, right? Because we don't always want to have to refresh the page, and it's just kind of tedious. We don't want to keep doing that. So we can send action, and we can send this to repeater. And when we send this to repeater, we can just hit go, and it sends it off and gives us a response, and we can see the response there. Uh, can y'all in the back see this? So no, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Y'all should have said something. Um, my fault. Uh, is Control Plus a thing in this? No, it's Java. It doesn't like that. Um, I don't know if I can increase the size of this. View, no. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I don't think this lets me. Can I plus? No. Uh, yeah, it won't let me increase the size of this. Um, uh, does Kali have a zoom feature? Zoom. Zoom. Is there a magnifying glass? Magnifying glass. I don't think that's the thing I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to see. Um, 150? Is that better? Wonderful. Um, I'm going to like move this over. Okay, cool. So we have the string. It's base64 encoded. Uh, we don't know what it is exactly yet. Uh, Henry probably has a hint of why, why it's what he thinks it is. But we do, technically speaking, we don't know what it is. So another great tool that Burp has um, is we can send this send to decoder because we don't want to decode this by hand. Like, what is this, like 1960s? Uh, so we can send it to the decoder, uh, and we can decode as base64. And uh, this is URL, uh, like URL gibberish. We can just delete that. Um, but we can see that it's JSON now. Um, it's user, dummy, country, I don't know, probably somewhere dumb, city, lame town, num2. Uh, it's a wonderful way of doing things. Uh, but now that we have this information and we know that we send this information to the server when we connect to it, what do we want to do with this information? What do we want to try to do in, in like more enumeration slash exploitation now? Because we're moving towards exploitation. Uh, change the username. Okay, well, we'll change the username. So uh, let's change it to CSG. Um, and we will encode as base64, and we will copy, oh, I removed the closing brace, my bad. See, good catch. Let's, I, I know what you're talking about. I think it should be okay. If I recall from, from this box, it doesn't actually complain too much. If uh, encode as base64. Um, let's see if this works. It kind of was fidgety, but... Uh, so we go back to the repeater, and we have this, and we will um, put that in. And then we hit go. And hey, look! We did made, made it do something it wasn't supposed to do. That is exploitation. We're done. Let's give ourselves a pat on the back. It says CSG instead of dummy now. Let's go. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Uh, but no. Uh, cool. But let's go further. So we can we can see that you know what we give it it lets us to uh, it does something on the server. Um, so let's go back to the decoder. And does anyone have other than Henry? Uh, sorry, Henry. Uh, other, anyone have anything they want me to do to this information to see if it breaks something? W what do you guys want me to do? Uh, you. 
can you change the two to like something else to see why like, we get 22 somehow? So change it to 22 in code. Um, it's already encoded, dude. It, it, it updates. It changed. It, 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 okay. I, I, you guys are just better than me at this. Um, make sure you don't like screw up. Yeah. So we're going to hit go again. And ooh, ooh, it's it's putting it together. Yeah, let's, let's clap, clap for it. Um, so it, we we can see that it's basically just putting the two files or two the two numbers together. Um, but that's kind of boring. Like, let's be real here. That's really boring. Uh, we want to let's do something that we that we shouldn't be. Let's add another like tag and see what happens. So I'm gonna add a uh, tag called CSG, um, and then it's going to have um, potato. And we are going to take this again. I wonder if I can like right click and send this to. Nope. Okay. I I didn't create a payload. But anyways, there's a way that you can like automate this a little bit more. But I'm not doing that right now. So let's go. And it did nothing. So we know that we can't necessarily give it uh, a new tag, or we. We know that it's not necessarily taking the ta extra tag we're putting and displaying it. So it's not, we, we know that it might be ingesting the tag, but it's not displaying the tag to us that we inputted. So let's go a little bit further. Let's give, instead of a number, let's give uh, like letters. And, um, and let's remove our like test case here. So we copy that. Um, Where's repeater? Uh, so let's go over here. Let's put that in. Let's go. And oh, what is this? We broke something? We broke something? How dare we? Uh, so so basically, we can see that it's, it's, it's it, we can't really, you know, um, we, we broke something. I don't know what else to say. We broke something. Uh, so at this point in time is the time where I would normally just start Googling around for a ton of different Node.js exploits uh, and like seeing what there is out there. And you know, being the person I am, I didn't want to make y'all sit through me Googling this. But so I already found one. And if I um, clear this and if I cap my exploit.py, but basically, what this is doing is it's a deserialization exploit of a job or of a Node.js object that we can inject into and use the eval function. Uh, a lot of like I'm saying a lot of big words. I know it, it's not that hard. You just like click enter and it gives you a payload and you insert it. I'll show you. Uh, I'm not very smart. It, like it's not that hard. Uh, <laughs> but so we have this exploit and if we generate. Um, Exploit dot, it's uh, Python, so you know you need to type Python. Uh, exploit dot py. And we need to give it the L host and the L port. So if I do uh, if config ton zero, uh, we can see that my IP address is 14. So if I copy that um, and then I do exploit and I give it my IP address and port 777, because uh, you know we want it to be lucky. Uh, and we have this like giant X like object right here that we can pass into it. I'm gonna decrease this because it's really hard to work like that. Uh, but we want to copy this entire string. We're gonna copy it, and um, I have already created a payload that uses this string, and I'm going to replace what I'm going to replace the part of the this which is which is all the way to here and uh, insert delete oh gosh dang it um, but let me this is the part where Nick says the uh, this is why you use Emacs and not Vim joke uh, this giant debate on that. So uh, I, I like legit just did this earlier, and it worked fine. Uh, Jace can be my vouch. I don't think so. 
<laughs> Gosh dang it, Chase. Okay, well, so basically what we have to do is, uh, I'm going to just open up, I have a better idea. Leaf pad. Oh, better than Vim and Emacs. <laughs> like, it is the best, it is the best. Um, so, I'm going to go into here and open my payload up. Uh, maybe this is easier for y'all to read too, so that y'all don't have a hard time reading. But what I'm doing here is I'm adding an RCE function that we know that it ingested, but we know that it doesn't display. We want it to ingest it and use the eval function, which is a, a call and node that will allow us to run commands on the server. And the exploit that we're running on the server is uh, going to allow us to have a shell. It's a very basic shell, but we will have a shell on this. Um, so if I remove what I was trying to remove earlier, It's, it's like a really long string, so, you know. Don't freeze. I'm streaming, running a VM, and like doing a ton of stuff, so I would imagine I would like it not to freeze. Let's go back. Yeah, I'm running Kali on a VM. Um, there's a, if you want more information on that, it's basically, I'm running VirtualBox. Um, why is it, why is it? We're, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll do it at the end. Uh, I'm going to like run this and then we'll be done. Uh, it's just that I forgot that my IP address changes every time I connect to the server. Um. So, so, so basically I had crafted this exploit, right? And I was like, oh, I'll just run it whenever I get here. And then I forgot that once I plug in, I'm going to have a different IP address. Uh, you know, because smart me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nick. I could have, but I had class. That's going to be my excuse. Okay, which class? I had operating systems. Okay. Disgusting. Yeah, someone's. In, I think someone's in my Osborne operating system class. <laughs> Do you want me to blab and like fill in time while you come? Yeah, if you want to, okay. actually, you plug his <laughs> thing while I do this oh, because. Uh, okay, hi everyone. I'm Henry. Uh, I I'm the president of a new club called uh, the Assembly Group, and we're actually going to be meeting right after this. In like eight minutes. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you can come late, but we welcome you there. Give a little spiel on what your club's about. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, we're going to be learning some basic stuff about assembly, and then I might also show you some interesting stuff you can do in assembly. So I think uh, today I was going to also do like a exploit and show you that it's something that you can, if you know assembly, it's something you can uh, be able to exploit work out and exploit. Assembly stuff is extra relevant to security because a lot, like if, especially if you're into like the binary exploitation field of security, you're, you're going to have to know reverse engineering, which is going to have a lot to do with assembly. So if that seems like a field that you would be interested in, highly recommend. Yeah, remember. Oh, and uh, we're going to be in ECSS 4.910. So it's kind of a little bit, a little bit far, a little bit of a walk. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Are you good or should I like fill in some more time? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loading up uh, the web browser, my dude, or burp to like do this. Uh, so I, I like, see you later, man. Um, so I've crafted this and I'm going to copy and paste it in here. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to run um, 
it's going to run this eval function and a bunch of bytecode and or it's just going to run this and it's going to give me a reverse shell. Uh, I'm going to encode this as base64 uh, and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in the repeater. It's going to be a very long string. Uh, and let me scroll up to make sure it copied right. And I hit go. Oh, I have a bracket missing. I think it's because I, I deleted something. I know what I deleted. Don't worry, guys. So, uh, also, just by like a reference of show, like I, I mess up a lot. What? I'm missing a closing bracket. Here? Yeah. Gotcha. So, like, just showing from, like, me doing this, uh, I'm not an expert, but, like, I still got an internship, and I still, like, did stuff, and so it's not, you don't have to be an expert at this. It just, you know, practicing a little by little every day can really, like, go a long way in the security field. Also, like, expect yourself to mess up, because, like, he could have easily been like, ah, oh, this exploit didn't work, I'm going to move on to something else. But, like, the issue was not the exploit, the issue was the fact that he had an encoding error. And so good. Yeah, which I'll show you. Like it says in the very top of this, which we know it's running. It says unexpected curly brace, um, basically meaning that like I didn't have in programming. I like you would you compile and your code would say unexpected curly brace or something like or uh, parentheses or something like that. And because of that, uh, I was like, oh, that's my fault. Let me fix it. Uh, yeah, as Nick was saying. So let me paste this. In decoder copy repeater paste and you know this is gonna run but wait we're not we don't have anything like gonna listen we how are we gonna get our shell right like that doesn't make sense so if we send the request in it sends this and we're like oh great but but we didn't get any shell like it we didn't get anything that ran, right? So what was the point of that? Well, we have to run a listener. And basically, um, I have a listener uh, set up. And this is not IP dependent, so like I don't need to worry about it. Uh, but it's a netcat that's just going to listen to anything that comes back on the port 777. So if I run netcat tech L for listen and some other stuff for some cool I'm connected. Hey, it worked. Um, so if I so if I run it again, for example, if I like close out of this and I run it again, what I'm basically doing is I'm sending myself a shell by by calling. Uh, I'm sending myself a shell because it allows me to send it code remotely. That is what that is what a remote code execution is. Does anyone have, I know it might be like a bit complicated to know at first. What, does anyone have any questions about why this is working or how this is working? No? Yeah? Can you put the exploit you used in the Discord? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put everything on the Discord after this. Um, so if I run netcat again, I sen I'm sending myself constantly a shell back or sending myself information on port 777 because the exploit allowed me to run code on the server. And now I can just hit this and wait and it connected back to me. And if I do who am I? Oh, not who am I, there you go. I am Sun, which if I go to another terminal and I look, who am I? I'm root, because my I'm root on my own machine, whereas here I am Sun. So if I do an LS, I can see a bunch of stuff. Um, and this is where I would want to do a prove-esque. So, there are a lot of things you can do, like Linux enum, like Linenum, which is a script that runs through a ton of information you'd want to look at in a Linux uh, environment. Uh, but for this case, I know exactly what we need to do. Does anyone have an idea of what we would want to do to get root access? Before we like move on to the previous guy, like say something about like the exploit that we use to get user access. Go ahead. Okay. So right now, as you guys can see, yay, we have a shell. We are a user on somebody else's machine. We totally hacked it. You know. But uh, I, something I just wanted to mention is uh, the route to exploit something. There, there's oftentimes multiple different ways to do this. For example, like, uh, 
you might like like with that particular web exploit, um, you could also like have early on noticed read some of the uh, the internal server errors are pretty verbose, and they mention make mention of where the eval statement is being called, and from there um, you you could have this other script to put together a nice payload for you, or you could just or you could uh, sort of ad lib it and and try to fit an eval statement within the uh, just write it yourself. You didn't. You don't necessarily. You don't even need to add a new tag. You can figure out which one of these attributes of the Node.js of that cookie is, is being evaled, and uh, so it's not necessary. So what I'm trying to get across is like there are multiple different paths, and it isn't. And uh, even if like Andrew was not fortunate enough to come to like come across this script, it would not be that it, it's not beyond anyone here. I think to like. So there is a proof of concept, uh, to add on what he's saying, there's a proof of concept for this exploit that just gives you a like one-liner that lets you run single commands inside. Of. And basically what, the, what that Python script that I had is doing is just giving me a reverse shell rather than running a single command. Um, so there are multiple ways of doing things. And there are two ways of even breaking into this machine if you want to try to do the other way of crafting your own exploit. This is kind of the, I don't, dare I say, skiddy way of doing it because you're just running a script to run it. But you would want to, if you want to learn, I'd highly recommend crafting your own exploit. Uh, just writing some Python to generate that piece of information based off of what you give it. Uh, it's really good to learn you know, how to write your own stuff, especially when you're doing this on a job basis. Um, but uh, I don't have enough time to do the root exploit. It's relatively easy. All you do is edit a file that lets you run scripts as root. Super easy. Uh, we are gonna, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Uh, before, like I do, does anyone have any questions about what I did uh, or anything at all? If you don't want to say it out loud right now, uh, just come to me like whenever this is all over and I'll answer it. Um, but you guys should head over to Henry's assembly group meeting. Sorry that this ran long. Uh, yeah. Oh, and also, if any of you like have done ActiveBox and you've done a retired box and you want to stream it, like hit us up because we'd love to have people stream like their their write up for a box on our channel. And for those who want, like, highly recommend.